Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to Engineering for Change, or E4C for short. Today, we're pleased to bring you this month's installment of the E4C webinar series, focusing on strategies to build a more gender equal tech sector. My name is Yana Aranda, and I'm the president of E4C, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. The webinar you're participating in today, it will be archived on our webinars page and our YouTube channel. You can find both links uh, noted on the slide that you are seeing right now. Information on upcoming webinars is available on our webinars page. If you're an E4C member, you will receive invitations to upcoming webinars directly in your inbox. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future speakers and topics, please contact the E4C webinars team at webinars at engineeringforchange.org. If you're following us on Twitter today, please join the conversation with our dedicated hashtag, hashtag E4C webinars. Before we move on to our presenters, I'd like to tell you a bit about Engineering for Change. E4C is a knowledge organization and a global community uh, of more than 1 million engineers, designers, development practitioners, and social scientists who are leveraging technology to solve quality of life challenges faced by underserved communities around the globe. Some of these challenges include access to clean water and sanitation, sustainable energy, improved agriculture, and information and communication technologies. We invite you to become a member. E4C membership is free and provides access to news and thought leaders, insights on hundreds of essential technologies in our solutions library, professional development resources, and current opportunities such as jobs, funding calls, fellowships, and more. E4C members also enjoy a unique user experience based on their site behavior and engagement. Essentially, the more you interact with the E4C site, the better we will be able to serve you resources aligned to your needs. We invite you to visit our website, engineeringforchange.org, to learn more and sign up. If you're interested in learning more about ICT tools that bring women into tech in various ways, we invite you to explore the E4C Solutions Library after the webinar. An example of the type of tech you'll find is Plant Village, which is an online user-moderated Q&A form dedicated to the goal of helping people grow their own food. It is an open resource that helps farmers solve plant-related questions and includes the Neuro app, which is a digital assistant to help farmers diagnose crop disease in the field when without an internet connection. The full report in the Solutions Library provides more information about technical performance, compliance with standards, academic research, and user provision models of this system. All information is sourced by E4C Research Fellows and reviewed by our community of experts, and it's available to E4C members free of charge. So definitely take the time to check it out. So a few housekeeping items uh, before we get started, and I see some of you are already doing this. Uh, let's practice using WebEx by telling us where you are in the chat box. Uh, which is located at the bottom right of your screen. So you can type your location there. If the chat is not open on your screen, try clicking the chat icon at the bottom of the screen in the middle of the slide. You can use this window to share remarks during the webinar. So we have Switzerland, New York. I saw someone type in earlier India. Um, I'm also, let's see, here's a few of myself here, Colorado, Portland. Brilliant. We're, we're glad you're here and joining us. If you have any technical questions, feel free to send a private chat to the Engineering for Change admin. All right. Um, during the webinar, please use the Q&A window, which is located below the chat, to type in your questions for the presenter. Again, if you do not see this, you should be able to uh, try. You should be able to see the icon in the middle of the slides and, and open it that way. If you're just listening to the audio broadcast and you encounter any trouble, try hitting stop and then start. You may also want to try opening a WebEx app in a different browser. E4C webinars qualify engineers for one professional development hour. 
To request your PDH, please sign in and go to your member dashboard to access the PDH form. The link is also available on the slide in front of you right now. So with that, I would like to introduce to you today's phenomenal speakers. First, we have Ursula Winhoven, who is an international lawyer with 22 years of experience. She joined ITU, which is the International Telecommunications Union, in 2017 as a representative at the United Nations. The ITU is the UN Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies, or ITT, with a mission to connect the world. Ursula leads UN relations and represents the agency and its Secretary General at the UN in New York. She heads the ITU's UN Liaison Office and works at the intersection of technology and development, promoting digital inclusion and the use of ICTs for sustainable development. Previously, Ursula spent 14 years with the UN Global Compact, the UN's Corporate Sustainability Initiative. Her last position was Chief Social Sustainability, Governance and Legal, and a member of the Executive Committee. Ursula led the UNGC's work on human rights and decent work, gender equality, poverty and inequality, peace, anti-corruption, and the rule of law. We're so honored to have you here with us, Ursula. <laughs> And we will also be, we are also joined today by Loli Gaitan, who is the community manager of Equals Global Partnership to Bridge the Gender Digital Divide, an initiative with over 90 partners and co-founded by ITU, the International Trade Center, UN Women, GSMA, and UN University. She has over eight years experience while working with quantitative and qualitative research methods to analyze international policy and development, specialized in technical assistance to achieve the sustainable development goals with particular focus on SDG 5, which is gender equality. Prior to joining ITU, Lolly worked as an international consultant for the International Trade Center's flagship initiative for women's economic empowerment, She Trades, and has previously worked for international think tanks and universities as a researcher and lecturer relating to international policy, business development, and political science. She holds a PhD in International Law and Economics from Bocconi University in Italy. Welcome, Loli. We're thrilled to have you join us as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ursula. And we will move forward. Actually, to Loli first. Loli. Oh, to Loli first. My apologies. Thank you so much for that correction. There you go, Loli. It is all yours. Should be there. Welcome, Loli. So you should be presenter now, Lolly, and you can feel free to advance the slides. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. I'm the presenter. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like you're on mute. There we go. Would you, I can also advance the slides on your Thank behalf. you so much, Diana. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, uh, sorry, I just have one complication here to pass the slides. I don't know why it's not appearing the 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 icon to pass the slides. Um, yeah. Uh, so the icon is is there. Try advancing the slides on the left hand side of the slides. The up and down arrows above the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I and E first C's admin can change the slides for you. So why don't you go let's go ahead and move yeah, forward with sorry, that. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on, but then yes, good morning and good afternoon everyone. Uh, depending on which side of the world you are. Uh, thank you so much for joining the webinar of today. And uh, we really want to say thank you to you, to E4C, for hosting and organizing this webinar series that I understand that it's a series you are delivering uh, to spread really the word on the importance of technology to make a better and more inclusive world for everyone. So I was rightly, rightly introduced by, by Yana. Uh, I'm Loli Gaitan. I'm the community manager of Equals Global Partnership. And uh, I'm also research analyst here at the International Telecommunication Union. Uh, we are based here in Geneva, in Switzerland. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to me uh, to be connected with you. Uh, today, in, my, in this part of my presentation, I will walk you through what is Equals. 
the structure of the global partnership, what the partners are doing, who are the partners, our work, and also the actions that each of any of our partners uh, are taking in order to reach this 50-50% gender balance in ICTs. So if we can maybe pass the slide, please. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so what is equals? And be before going to what is equals, I would like to share with you why is equals. So we all know, and to give you just some statistics about and data about the, the lack of connectivity, um, we have still 3.9 billion uh, people still not connected to the internet. So the proportion of men using the internet nowadays is higher than the proportion of women using the internet in two-thirds of the countries worldwide. Uh, unfortunately, uh, still, women are not adequately represented as uh, stakeholders, as co-creators, co beneficiaries of technology-based uh, interventions, and they are often, this happens because they are lacking of some access to technology, digital skills, and media and information literacy. So, in terms of data quality as well, so we, we, we are not having or not, not gathering enough data in order to um, deliver a good research and see what steps need to be taken in order to close this digital gender divide. So having said this, the goal of the global partnership equals is to create an unstoppable movement where women and girls are equal participants in the digital technology, technology revolution. Can we pass the slide, thanks. Okay, oops, yeah, I think it was the, yeah, the previous one, thank you. The previous slide, thanks. Okay. Okay, it's fine. So how does how how do we work? How equals work? So we are, as I told you before, we are based in ITU. So the Secretariat of Equals is in Geneva, and we work. Our governance structure is kind of we work in four different areas that are coalitions. We have one steering committee, uh, and we have one annual meeting, which is the annual meeting in where all the equals principals. Uh, of, of the members uh, of the partnership uh, get together in order to see what has been delivered and what are the take the, the actions that they need to take in order to 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 deliver more on this topic. So next, please. Thank you. So the steering committee, as I mentioned before, the steering committee. We have uh, this global partnership was created in 2017 uh, mm -hmm. by five co-founders. So we have in the first line, as you can see, so we have the Global Society Mo uh, Mobile Association, um, we have UN Women, uh, we have the UN University Computing and Society, International Telecommunications Union, and International Trade Center. So those are the five co-founders. Besides that, in the steering committee, we also have our financial contributors uh, or donors and the organizations leading the work in each of the coalition that I will explain you about later. Next, please. So today, as you can see, we have more than 90 partners from every region of the world. Uh, I do, we just put in this slide some of them to give you an idea of the variety of the partners that we have in the, in the, in the in equals. So we have from governments, we have private sector, we have uh, NGOs, uh, we have academia. And you will see later why we have this variety of partners in the partnership. So each of them uh, responded to this call to action that we set up into, back in 2017. Uh, and the idea was initially, and still is the idea, uh, setting up this collaborative and coordinated framework uh, to make a specific measurable pledges across three focus area coalitions and one research group. Next slide, please. So each time that we get a new partner uh, approved to be on board of equals, uh, a commitment 
has to be made by the partner, and uh, this, this partner will commit to implement impact-driven action to make substan substantive progress towards SDG 5. So the commitments have very, very strict characteristics, I should say, so they should be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Next slide, please. Okay. So some of the key achievements, just to give you an idea of what we are doing, uh, in terms of advocacy. So equal uh, was recognized in the G20 leaders declaration, uh, was also included as the digital inclusion co-chair of the W20. And we are always uh, trying to, to be present in these key events, uh, such as the European Development Days. We also uh, did uh, a panel uh, during the Commission on the Status of Women in New York in past March. Uh, World Economic Forum, we have, uh, you organized some, a couple of sessions there uh, during the Mobile World Congress, uh, with this forum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is from the site of advocacy and raise awareness. Uh, we have also our big annual event each year, is the flagship event of Equals, which is, uh, is, more, is known as the Equals in Tech Awards. So with this annual event that we organize at the Secretariat, we are recognizing initiatives, projects, and other programs that are contributing to our goal, which is reach the gender digital divide. So in the past couple of years, and as you can see the numbers there, so we have received over 1,800 nominations from every corner of the world. Uh, this year, the award ceremony will take place in the Internet Governance Forum in Berlin in November. So we invite you all of you joining this webinar, uh, and we invite you to, to send and submit your initiatives or projects you're working on uh, for next year's awards. Next, please. Okay, so as I was mentioning before, with the creation of equals, uh, we work in four different coalitions of, I would say, actions. So these four areas of action, we have access, to skills, leadership, and research. Basically, we decided to have these four areas of action since those are the challenges that women and girls are facing in the digital age. So we needed to, to, to embrace and to, to, to embrace these challenges as the, the actions that we need to take as the equal partnership. Uh, so despite we know that there are a growing number of digital equality initiatives around the world, uh, ranging from awareness raising events to mentoring, uh, skills tutoring, but the lack of coordinated effort toward digital inclusion is like the key and has ultimately led many projects that are similar sometimes in nature um, being less effective, you know, because of the lack of coordination and diffusion. Next, next slide, please. So we have the Access Coalition, the first area of action that we have. Uh, each area is, uh, we have one institution that is leading, one or two institutions leading in each area of action. So in the Access Coalition, the coalition leader is GSMA. Um, why the Access? So we know that women are 12% less likely to use the internet compared to men globally for different reasons that uh, we've been research, doing some research at the Secretariat as well and the research group of equals. Uh, mostly cultural barriers uh, are not allowing as well to, to reach, uh, to increase this percentage of use of internet. Uh, also 33% 30, 30, fewer, fewer women are online compared to men in all of the 47 UN designated least developed countries. So that's why the Access Coalition was created, and it's focused uh, on reducing the gender gap in internet access and use. Next, please. So what's the work of the coalition in specifically? So they share information and experience and best practices. Um, they identify high impact initiatives or actions so they can work in a coordinated way uh, on those initiatives. They identify countries where there can be, they can have coordinated action. 
So lately they have been working a lot in Bangladesh and Rwanda, for example, and they advocate. So this is, this is the, ad the advocacy element of this global partnership, I must say, is like a cross-cutting issue uh, on, the four, on the four areas in where we work. So um, next slide, please. So now we pass to the Skills Coalition. The Skills Coalition, uh, the leaders of the Skills Coalition is UNESCO and Germany. So why the Skills Coalition? It is estimated that 90% of all future jobs will have a digital component. And unfortunately, only 17 of technology jobs are held by women. So with this in mind, uh, for us, it's very relevant to uh, start the work and uh, the promotion of STEM, STEAM education uh, in girls at the schools. Uh, so then they feel like motivated uh, in taking this uh, decision of follow, uh, for following a, a career in the, in the ICTs related to the ICT sector for the tertiary education mainly. So if you can see there, there is a picture of one of our last uh, last activities that we did um, in Ethiopia. This is during the Girls in ICT Day. It was in April. And uh, you see there all the, the girls. We did um, a boot camp, uh, one day boot camp uh, in Addis. Uh, and they are doing the signal of equals, which is like the two arms like that. So supporting as well uh, the initiative. We have some partners delivering uh, in the in the boot camp, some some technical capacity and capacity building there, and it was a great uh, a great experience for all of us. The next, please. So the work that we do in the coalition uh, at the coalition level for the skills, so it's basically a bit of uh, developing principles, guidelines, and good practices as well. Uh, in particular, for gender transformative skills training and evaluation. Uh, we are expanding uh, the International Girls in ICT Day campaign. So um, the International Girls in ICT is another initiative uh, of international, the ITU, of ITU. And uh, we are trying to uh, do this campaign as well, as every day is Girls in ICT Day. Uh, we also, they also launched the Equals Digital Skills Grassroots Innovation Fund. This is a fund in where uh, managed by the Web Foundation, uh, and they are uh, they are providing support to institutions, uh, local institutions in different countries uh, that are working, uh, providing capacity building and training to women and girls in technology technology topics. And uh, we built a virtual skills school. The idea is to provide certified digital skills training to girls and women who cannot attend on-site class. Uh, and again, raise awareness of the importance of gender equality in digital and physical space. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is the third action of EQUALS, which is leadership, the leadership coalition. This coalition is, um, the leaders are the International Trade Center and UN Women. So why this coalition? Because women now make up approximately 50% of the global force, and yet 2% of venture capital tech funding goes to the startups with female founders in Silicon Valley. So we have a very high uh, investment uh, in women women-owned SMEs uh, in the tech sector, and also we need to increase, the idea on this coalition is increase the senior uh, management position in technology companies. So that's why the Equals Leadership Coalition aims to address the barriers that prevent women from rising to the top of their choosing technology field. Next slide, please. Some work of the coalition. So the activities are designed concretely in five main areas. So the first one, mobilization and building a professional network of women in tech. Identifying capacity building workshops for women entrepreneurs. Um, we do a multi-stakeholder call for good practices and encouraging tech companies to sign up to the webs. And we are identifying local initiatives for connecting entrepreneurs to investors. 
And besides that as well, we are trying to uh, get some influence at the policy level, so with some policy recommendations for regulatory agencies and governments. Uh, in this area, probably uh, Ursula will, will also mention some of the great work she's doing from the ITU New York office since she's been leading some of the initiatives that we have under the leadership coalition, such as roundtable of, and roadmaps for investors and also the gender task force. Next slide, please. So last but not least uh, is the research group. Um, this research group is a cross-cutting group around the three areas, access, skills, and leadership. We have over 30 members, and the leader of the research group is the UN University, Computing Access and Society section. So next slide, please. So about the coalition, uh, for us, is, as I mentioned it at the beginning of the webinar, so evidence and data are needed to inform policy to bridge the gender digital divide. Because if we don't have the data, we don't know where to go, what actions to take. So that's why for us it's very relevant, this research group. Um, yet only 41 countries collect data on women participation on women in national economy. So we have a comprised group of experts from every corner of the world, as you saw in the map that I previously showed. Uh, and we are, see, we are trying to look for the causes and the remedies for gender tech inequalities and motivating our, our other members in order to take action. Next slide, please. So the work of the coalition basically through research uh, in the sense that we are developing robust and rigorous methodologies for collecting, evaluating, analyzing, and presenting quantitative and qualitative data uh, derived from a wide and highly diversity variety of sources. So the first output, and since uh, this, this partnership was created recently, like it's just two years born, um, the first output of the research group uh, was the inaugural report. So in this report, uh, they, they did a very, very in-depth analysis of the state of gender equality in the three coalition areas, access, skills, and leadership. You can find this report uh, in the website of equals.org, so I really invite you to, to have a look of that. You will find their report complete, and you will find as well a brief of the report. Uh, besides that, uh, we also develop a centralized knowledge sharing platform that will serve as a core resource uh, for coalition members of and the Equal Secretariat and other interested uh, stakeholders. Next slide, please. So these are our latest reports, so in terms of a bit of research. So, so the first product from the research group, they work in this report for a year and a half, is the taking stock data and evidence on gender equality in digital access, skills, and leadership. This report was launched in, in March, I think. Yes, March, in, during the Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, we had a very interesting discussion there. And then I included this other report that was not, is not a, uh, let's say, a product of the research group, but was a, is a product of the Skills Coalition. And is this, I'd blush if I could, Closing gender divides in digital skills through education. And with that, I would like just to finish uh, with some recommendations for closing the digital skills gender gap that you will find as well in the reports. So basically, the conclusions of the report, uh, um, yeah, in the conclusion, in the, in, the, in the recommendations of the report, um, we came up with 15 recommendations. So the first one, is try to adopt sustained, varied, and life-wide approaches. The second one is establish incentives, targets, and quotas. The third, embed ICT in formal education. The fourth recommendation is supporting engaging experiences. The fifth is emphasize meaningful use and tangible benefits. The sixth, encourage collaborative and peer learning. The seventh is create safe spaces and meet women where they are. The eighth, examine exclusionary practices and language. The ninth, recruit and train gender-sensitive teachers. 
The tenth, promote role models and mentors. Eleventh, bring parents on board. Twelve, leverage community connections and recruit allies. Thirteen, support technology autonomy and women's digital rights. Fourteen, use universal service and access funds. And 15, collect and use data and set actionable indicators and targets. So having said this, uh, enumerating these 15 recommendations from the research report, and I'd blush if I could, so I finish my presentation. Uh, thank you so much to all for the, for the attention. Thank you, Lolly. That was very insightful. And uh, 15 recommendations that we'll have to be sure to capture and share with our attendees. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Ursula uh, to dive a little deeper. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect way. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. And I just would like to add to um, Lolly's uh, thanks so much to, to you guys for inviting us um, to work with you on this webinar today uh, and really delighted to participate. Um, before I dive in, just want to add one thing about Equals, uh, an important thing, that it's actually an open partnership. So other organizations are very welcome to join. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Um, and uh, also individuals as well are, are able to get involved. Um, and uh, so any who are interested to do so, we'd, we'd love to follow up with you. So the, the jumping off point um, for the remainder of this presentation, basically, you know, why does Equal seek to mobilize partners around the issues of access, skills, leadership, and research? Basically because all of these different areas are both part of the problem, but also progress in these interconnected areas is absolutely critical to the solution. And so in this latter part of the presentation, we're going to do a deeper dive, particularly around what was, um, Lolly described as a leadership dimension, around gender equality and the tech workplace. And then we'll conclude very briefly with a few recent developments here at the United Nations. I should add, um, because we didn't say, the ITU, um, for any who are not familiar, is the UN Specialized Agency for information communication technologies. So when, when looked at from the point of view of the workplace, um, ICT access and digital skills are clearly really key to building the pipeline for future tech employees, managers, and entrepreneurs. However, what happens in the workplace and entrepreneurial ecosystem is critical to keeping women in tech and to drawing women into tech in the first place. And so too often, the focus is only on Hiring women and the lack of gender diversity in tech is painted as, as mainly a pipeline issue. However, studies show that there's a huge turnover of women in tech. Estimates range from 40 to 50 percent. Harvard Business Review, for instance, has estimated that 41 percent of women working in tech eventually end up leaving the field compared with just 17 percent of men. And the situation is even worse for women entrepreneurs in tech. Of the 2 to 3% venture capital that Lolly mentioned that goes to women entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs with deep tech businesses not specifically catered to women, such as you know, e-commerce, e um, websites, et cetera, on fashion, face even more obstacles in trying to get um, funding for their, for their businesses. So why are these challenges the way they are and why is turnover so high? Well, it's not the work. It turns out it's actually the work environment in many tech settings that um, is the challenge and needs to be systematically and holistically fixed. One study, for instance, of 716 women who left tech after an average of seven years found that almost all liked the work itself, but almost all were unhappy with the work environment. Research funded by NSF, for instance, surveyed 5,300 women who had earned engineering degrees of all types over the last 50 years, and 38% were no longer working as engineers because of the working environment. So many of us are familiar with the results of studies that show, for instance, that when presented with lines of code written by a woman and a man respectively, that the code written by a woman is judged as, as better if the gender of the coders is not known, and as inferior to the men's code if their gender is known. 
There's also a frequently repeated study, including by Yale, that shows that applications and resumes, applications for jobs, and resumes with a female name on them are treated less favorably than the same resume with a randomly assigned man's name on them. Unconscious bias also finds its way into performance evaluations. A study of 248 performance reviews for high performers in tech found that around 88% of the women's reviews contained critical feedback compared to around 59% of the men's. A negative personality criticism was far more likely to show up in critical reviews of women than of men. In only two out of the 83 critical reviews received by men in the study, but in 71 of the 94 critical reviews received by women. Perhaps helping to explain the low percentage of VC capital that goes to women entrepreneurs, a study by Harvard Business School, Wharton, and MIT found that the same pitch to investors narrated by a man was rated as more persuasive, logical, and fact-based than when narrated by a woman at a rate of 68% to 32%. And when negotiating for a salary increase, a study by Harvard and CMU found that women who asked for a higher salary were rated as more difficult to work with and less nice, while men were not perceived negatively from negotiating. So let's move to the slide. So this slide here, um, and uh, apologies, uh, when we uh, made it landscape, I think it got distorted. So apologies to IEEE, because this is actually um, results of a, of a really interesting IEEE Women in Tech survey. Um, and it echoes findings such as these um, uh, in other surveys, unpacking some of the working environment experiences that women in tech um, members, that their women in tech membership have had. Um, and so uh, there is actually a beautiful flyer that they've created, which looks much more uh, attractive than this one, so apologies uh, for that. Um, but as you can see here, uh, it's a little hard to, to read, but um, what it reports is that um, something like 28% uh, of these women surveyed have experienced unwanted sexual advances, um, a whole lot of um, non-inclusive uh, behaviour, 73% have experienced negative outcomes in their careers that they believe were attributed to being female. Um, some of the non-inclusive behaviour they experienced were 58% um, having been asked inappropriate questions during job interviews, 71% um, saying that questions or comments were addressed to males when the questions should have been addressed to them because they were the subject matter expert, 39% um, um, have felt that they were assigned lower level tasks or administrative tasks um, compared with um, men at the same level. And 37% felt that they were excluded from, from networking opportunities. And then finally, 51% um, felt the need to speak less about their family at work to be taken seriously, so that not feeling that they can bring their, their whole self um, to, the work, to the workplace. So um, basically, experiences such as those help explain why um, perhaps why only 25% of computer jobs are currently held by women and only 12% of engineers at Silicon Valley startups are women at the moment. 5% of leadership positions in the tech sector um, are held by women and 7% of partners at the top 100 venture capital firms. Um, and also women are far more likely than men at any age to be in junior um, positions. But so clearly there's not just a simple solution to what um, really is um, most likely a, a result to a large extent of unconscious bias that pervades tech and really every other sector that both um, men and women have. Because these biases, these um, stereotypes as women and men, we, we have them. So this is not a, a women versus men issue at all. Really gender equality is an issue for all of us and stereotypes and um, expectations based on gender, really um, harmful for women and, and men as well. So um, basically, as I said, there's no simple solution. And similarly, sitting back and waiting for times to change is also not an attractive option. So the World Economic Forum has estimated that it may take around 200 years to close the economic gender gap at the current rates of progress. So not only is this all profoundly unfair, it also flies in the face of extensive research on the strong business and economic case for tackling bias and embracing inclusion. Joining forces through global partnerships such as Equals to share and learn together and engage in collective action is one way that we can all amplify our efforts and help 
speed up progress. Uh, also, organisations um, do need to take more responsibility to make their workplaces more inclusive um, and not with an initiative just here or there, but in a more holistic, systemic way to really cut it back that 200-year um, uh, uh, trajectory. So what I now wanted to share with you um, is more about what we can do as individuals in our own work environments to help make a difference and speed up progress. So traditionally, there's been a lot of focus on what the CEO says of an organization and does on these kinds of issues, um, and also on the policies that companies um, and organizations have in place. And these are definitely really, really, really important. However, there's other elements which also should be looked at, particularly are the daily interactions that we have with managers, colleagues, team members, and clients. And rather than a single catalytic event that pushes a lot of women out the door, many experience a build-up or slow grinding down over time that makes them feel that they do not belong and that they're not welcome. And in a nutshell, um, to bring about a more inclusive tech sector, we all have a role to play. Um, gender equality really will require the efforts of all of us. So um, this kind of thinking, the idea that in addition to what our organizations are doing, what the leadership of organizations are doing, uh, the policies they're putting in place, there's this idea that there are things that we as individuals can do, whether we're a woman or a man, um, that can help create more inclusive environments um, that will also be more productive and, um, and innovative. So um, this and the, the current situation is painted in some of the statistics that I flagged earlier. Um, led to this project carried out for the IEEE and Equal. Um, there was a working group that came up with this idea of um, 25 ways to be a more inclusive engineer. Um, and each of the practices in the five areas we're going to show you are footnoted with links to research that explains why that practice is important. And as a reminder, these, these actions are meant as a complement and not as a substitute for what organizations um, need themselves to do and the leadership roles that CEOs um, can and should take to support uh, gender equality. So the first area um, is in um, business uh, leadership. And uh, as you can see here, um, some of the practices are about being sensitive to the impact of micro inequities and the unconscious um, biases that and assumptions and stereotypes that can creep in even to daily conversations that might inadvertently um, reinforce um, stereotypes. Uh, and even, you know, at the water cooler, we can hear um, assumptions and things being made. So these are opportunities as well to um, help interrupt fixed mindset talk by questioning language like natural talent, born leaders, or that someone on the other side is not leadership material, a leopard doesn't change its spots, or either you've got it or you don't. Um, uh, another one is about the, um, how important it is to encourage others to apply or ask for a certain position, award, or role, um, because a lot of research says that um, women are a lot less likely to apply for these things, including because of the existence of these um, bias and stereotypes, which um, have been internalized. Um, the importance of not underestimating the power of simply um, encouraging others to take on a project um, and to do so in ways that does not set up people to, to fail. Um, also, the importance if you're supervising people to be honest and fair in feedback for employees of all, all genders and creating opportunities to have substantive discussions on performance in, in, in private. So these are just some of them and there's many more, um, more, there's a lot more detail elaborated as I said footnoted as well in the um, the actual uh, 25 ways uh, document. The next category is about process and system leadership. And at this point, I might just speed up a little bit because I, I know um, we're running short of time and I want to make sure we have time for your uh, questions and comments, etc. So in this area, it covers things like um, being inclusive in the products and processes developed, being mindful of potential differentiated impacts on, on different people, um, proactively seeking to expand and diversify your networks. A lot of research shows that our own networks, um, professional and personal, tend to look a lot like ourselves. So it really can pay off to be proactive and, and, and try and reach out and build connections with people who um, are different from ourselves. 
and uh, that that can be beneficial all around. Um, from the organizational level, um, as was actually mentioned by Lolly, um, one can encourage one's um, company or organization to sign the Women's Empowerment Principle, which are seven principles that look across the workplace, marketplace, and community and really speak to the kind of policies that such organizations can adopt to really holistically and systemically embrace um, and gender equality and achieve their own goals in this, in this um, jumping ahead to the next category, development and monitoring. Um, this is about, uh, among other things, taking up opportunities to mentor and sponsor people of, of different genders and, and minorities. And once again, um, the, you know, there's a really important difference between mentoring, which is really valuable, but also sponsoring. Sponsoring is where you speak up about someone else and their talents in, in ways that really matter. And, uh, and can help them to, to, to get ahead. And this tends to happen a lot less for, for women um, than for, for men. Um, offering speaking opportunities um, to, to women and minorities is really key. And some, some uh, people have made pledges, for instance, not to speak on any all-male panels, also known as mannels, uh, and instead to um, encourage um, that the invitation be extended to, um, to women and minorities, um, from their organization and uh, even asking as well the organization before they accept speaking what is the, um, the gender balance um, of the particular um, panel. Um, jumping ahead to um, the area of empathy, um, this is about among other things looking for and taking up opportunities to really understand the experiences of others and how they may be different from your own. Um, at one, a workplace and work environment may be super fun and engaging for some, um, but it's very easy to extrapolate from that and to think that, that everybody experiences that way. Um, but in fact, um, that might not be the case. So the opportunity to engage with people, understand people's experiences is really, really valuable. Similarly, um, a whole lot around meeting dynamics, um, making space um, for women and men's voices, paying attention to who's um, being interrupted, um, and, and in fact, there's even an interesting study that shows that the women judges on the US Supreme Court um, are interrupted many, many more times, even by their fellow male judges, um, and even by um, lawyers, male lawyers in front of them than the, than the male judges. So it's a pretty um, uh, widespread um, practices. And once again, just to reiterate, a lot of this is unconscious. So it's really about being aware, and I think this 25 Ways document can help identify some of the ways that as women and men, um, we, we may not always be um, acting as inclusively as we can um, in a way that can really help make a difference in the, in the tech um, workplace, and indeed all, all workplaces. This also includes um, the importance of avoiding making assumptions about people because of their gender or family status, including as to their goals, needs, likes or dislikes. So, and similarly, even just not assuming if you're a manager that everything is fine unless people complain to you. Um, instead, proactively checking in with people um, to find out about their needs and concerns is really, really helpful. Um, and then the final category is about diversity and inclusive leadership. Uh, and uh, it's an opportunity, among other things, to make executives and others aware of the business case for increasing women and underrepresented groups in the workforce. There's, there's so many studies that talk about how it's so beneficial for companies, it helps them be more productive and innovative, um, as well as be just much greater places to work and really reduce um, turnover, et cetera. Um, there are opportunities here as well, you know, in terms of, you know, I think we've Many of us have been in the situation where there's, say, a client or a partner who may just assume that um, the, the woman is the more junior um, and um, refer questions and, and comments um, to the men um, in the room. So in fact, if it is a woman who's the subject matter expert or who's leading the project, the really importance of, of um, ensure that the, um, the client or the partner is directed to the, the right uh, people, because it's uh, one of the they can really grind you down over time to have that so often uh, happen. Um, also, um, one of the other points here, very important, is really around the collecting of data. Um, and I think so often, because a lot of these things are just not so visible um, until you really look at it, 
collecting data around these things is really helpful um, in making the um, helping to build the feeling the need to actually uh, make change and create these more inclusive uh, workspaces. So um, I just wanted to also briefly mention the issue of backlash and fatigue um, to diversity inclusion. Um, this is also a reality um, that we even he have here at the United Nations. Um, and so there's at least uh, two different approaches. Um, one is, and this is actually the first one, is the approach that the UN Secretary General um, <laughs> has adopted and announced at, in March at the UN uh, Women Conference. Um, he describes it as uh, pushing back against the pushback, uh, and uh, he says, he said boldly, um, in a way that perhaps only he could, that power is uh, never given, uh, it is taken. Um, but another approach, um, and I think these can both coexist as well, um, is um, working to try and design and implement programs that, on diversity inclusion that minimize the risk of backlash and effectively respond if it does occur. So some of the kinds of actions that can be taken in this regard is having a really clear statement of support from the organization's leadership on the strategic importance of the actions and also of the benefit for all employees, not just for, um, you know, just for women, for instance, of having a more inclusive work environment and really showing that they value diversity inclusion um, for what it brings to the organization, um, including in areas like innovation, productivity, et cetera, uh, and not um, just for its own sake. Um, having the data, just as I referred to just briefly um, a few moments ago, engaging men is absolutely critical. As I mentioned before, these issues um, are, are for women and men and gender equality is for, for, for all of us um, and uh, needs to also um, be a priority to engage men, particularly in environments that have you know, majority men. Um, it's not going to get very far unless men understand um, these efforts and um, why they're of value and why they're important and, and um, you know, many, many influential men as well are willing to act as allies in support of these, um, these efforts. Um, it, there's a few other uh, types of actions there that are, that are um, recommended. So just uh, very briefly then, and this will just take less than a minute, I just wanted to flag some recent UN calls to address the gender digital divide. Um, so for instance, there's a, an annual resolution that takes place um, at the United Nations called um, ICT, Information Communication Technology for Sustainable uh, Development. This is a resolution of the General Assembly, 193 um, member states. And uh, they have um, language, as you can see there, really calling on addressing gender digital divide, welcoming initiatives such as um, Equals, International Girls in ICT Day, which is the fourth Thursday in April and is a wonderful way to um, help promote um, tech careers to, to girls. Um, and calling really on all stakeholders once again, um, seeing the role for us all to play in this regard. Even the Secretary General's internal strategy, um, interestingly, um, highlights the issue for women entrepreneurs and how to increase their participation. And then finally, um, the UN Secretary General uh, had a high-level panel on digital cooperation. It just came out with its report on 10 June, and recommendation 1C is around this issue um, of inclusion and, once again, calling on, on all the private sector, civil society, governments, et cetera, to adopt policies to support full digital inclusion and digital equality for women and others. So with that, I will stop and uh, thank you so much. Looking forward to any comments or questions. Thank you, Ursula. Uh, a lot of tangible uh, recommendations, things that could be put into play, and we're certainly uh, hopeful that our attendees uh, will uh, take some of these and, and try to implement them in at whatever level of the organizations that they are a part of um, where there's opportunity. So uh, at this point, we'd like to open up the floor to any questions uh, from our attendees. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and get us started. I, I, I was uh, really interested in seeing these recommendations, but also would love to hear from both uh, or either of you, Loli or Oshla, based on, on the work of some of the research uh, can you provide any examples of organizations, be it private sector or public, uh, that are, are implementing some of these recommendations or, or doing things right, if you will, 
to really bring women in more effectively um, into the tech sector. Um, some examples that have maybe shown promise, you know, case studies that you can provide. Yes, uh, sure. I think that um, the, there's actually many. And I think what, if you look at these different practices we mentioned, I think that while it would be hard to find any organization that's currently doing all of those things, many organizations are doing some of these things. Um, and that is, I think, really exciting and a great basis to build on. The real issue, I think, in order to make progress happen much faster is that it needs to be more holistic and systematic um, and not just rely on a few champions or to think, oh, well, we have a program here or there or we have someone working on diversity and inclusion. We can just get on and do whatever we're doing and then they're going to handle that. It's really the idea of, um, you know, that we really all have a role to play, including, as you said, no matter where we are in the organization. So, I mean, definitely, I mean, you, you pick a tech company, they've all got something. Uh, so it's, it's really not an issue of, of not doing anything. Uh, it's more just being more deliberate, intentional, holistic, looking at a lot more of these um, practices and, and really trying to... Um, uh, internalize these ideas across the organization. So, I mean, I could just list tech companies, but I, in a way, I mentioned the backlash issue, and I think in a way, part of why that may be occurring is that, um, and including, you know, in some companies where they're seeing it even more, it may well be because some of these diversity inclusion efforts are actually starting to have headway. Um, and so, um, you know, it may well even be, if you look at ones that have the biggest backlash, they may also have some of these practices. <laughs> All right. Um, Lolly, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or. Lolly? Oh, Lolly, you're on mute. <laughs> Hi. Sorry. Hello. No worries. Hi, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, Yana. Yeah, I totally agree with what Ursula just have said. And um, just adding to that, uh, it's true that everywhere now, uh, the topic. Uh, in general of gender, it's been mainstreaming uh, at the institutional level, like internally in the organizations, like for example, private sector that we work a lot, uh, we have Microsoft, we're getting IBM, they are working internally in order to improve like regulations and policies uh, to promote more women in senior management positions. So that's one, that's something uh, that it's key for them, for, for management in tech, in tech companies. Um, and, uh, and I think it's, it's something we've been working with them very closely, yeah. So another question I have, and, and Lolly, you, you spoke about, uh, you know, the, the Skills Coalition and uh, some of the work that's being done by Equal, some of the programs being run, and certainly ensuring that those skills are taught to all children, particularly girls, is, is a major part of that. Uh, I would love to hear a little bit more also about how how we are passing on also these practices, some of these principles, and integrating them into the mindset uh, starting at K-12, right, starting at the very early point uh, where a lot of these biases are introduced. Uh, can you share anything about that? Is that something that's being pursued as well in parallel with the digital skills training? Yes, if I understand well uh, your question, yeah, uh, we are, our partners, uh, members in the Skills uh, Coalition, yeah, they're working um, a lot with governments, closely with governments, uh, in order to mainstream uh, all these uh, gender side and also to provide like recommendations in terms of how to include uh, in the, in the, in the educational programs of, you know, from primary education, secondary education, uh, mostly um, elements uh, already of uh, tech uh, in their in their in their uh, in their programs. So um, we do that uh, with the governments, and we are trying uh, to spread the world and and uh, and share all this information through mm -hmm. our networks, the networks that we are creating. So I mean we've been like only two years, let's say, in the in the in the in this partnership global level. But uh, we are trying our best in order to share all these actions uh, that can be replicated, no? Because the idea is that we we share best practices and we see what 
what uh, what has worked and what not, try to improve, and then we are sharing. And I just give you a very quick example on the Skills Coalition. So we have uh, African Code Girls Initiative, which is a, a boot camp of six months, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's six month camp for African uh, girls. Um, and we this pro this project uh, was uh, replicated, and it's been replicated now for the Arab uh, we, Women and Girls Can Code Initiative. So we are trying to, you know, sharing uh, from different regions and different parts of the world. Of course, each region has different each, each region has different characteristics. So we take mm -hmm. care as well, and we see how we can. Uh, uh, we can translate, yeah, transplant, let's say, these these projects and these initiatives in different parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And given that E4C reaches a lot of entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs who are leveraging technology to improve quality of life, and, and many of them are, in fact, women, one of the things that really perks up my interest personally is the initiatives that you have related to connecting entrepreneurs to investors. Given the limited do funding dollars that are going to female founders of such uh, enterprises. Um, are there any, uh, also some examples that you can share of, of these types of initiatives, mm -hmm. events, uh, maybe whether it's stateside or India or Africa that maybe you think uh, have been doing a, a great job, I suppose, of connecting, uh, of making these connections? So I think, I think this question is, Right, perfect for Ursula. Since uh, I was mentioning in my in my presentation, so Ursula, which is the uh, the special representative of ITU in New York, she's been leading uh, in particular in this topic of investors and how they can improve uh, from the investors' perspective and the women entrepreneurs' perspective. They can improve um, the linkages between them in order to really like you know support. It each other yeah so Ursula I don't know if you have some nice sure, examples yeah. you can share absolutely yeah one of the main things we've been doing is actually working with um, the investors that are kind of at the top of the food chain that have a big impact on venture capital as well as that engage um, companies as well um, and it's been very focused on um, pension funds and um, big asset um, managers um, working with them to raise their awareness of a lot of these kinds of issues because it's really quite surprising while there are a lot of initiatives that have tended to look, for instance, increasingly at environmental issues, um, mm -hmm. as it comes to issues of gender equality, there have been some initiatives that have focused more on gender, like women-specific funds or gender lens investing, but the, the, the most of the investing, the mainstream investing, hasn't really uh, looked at this much to date. So we've been doing roundtables with them to raise their awareness and coming up with um, good practices that they um, think that they could implement to try and make a difference because they, they have a really big role in venture capital. Um, they provide a lot of the funding for that um, as, as limited partners. I and mean, as I said, they also engage companies as well. And then in addition, um, the Leadership Coalition has this fantastic um, webinar series. Um, you can see information about it and, and, and join in at equals.org website, um, where they have had a number of webinars around the issue of getting funding um, and other different kinds of challenges and issues that women entrepreneurs in tech um, face. Um, so they're just a couple of the things that um, we've been working on um, to date. Um, but it's just such a key issue, and as I mentioned, even the UN Secretary General had highlighted how critical it is because it's it's just so low. And as a result, um, they're not, it's not just them missing out; we're all missing out because of the amazing solutions they could be bringing to make all our lives better. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Violent agreement. Well, uh, with that, uh, I do apologize. We did go over time, but it's just, uh, you know, there's such a great opportunity for us to dig into these issues. And we are thrilled at E4C to continue to also advocate and share this message and these opportunities and really raise awareness around uh, the, the, of the work that is left to do, which is significant. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank you both, Ursula and Molly, for joining us today from across the world. 
And uh, for all of our listeners, thank you for attending. If you are interested in getting your PDHs, please feel free to go to the link here. If there are questions that we didn't address or you'd like to follow up on, feel free to email us at the webinars at engineeringforchange.org. And of course, we encourage you to become E4C members to get information on upcoming webinars. We will be following up with all of our listeners and our entire membership regarding uh, the recording of this webinar, along with some of the resources that were shared by our distinguished panelists. So thank you, uh, everyone. Have a fantastic morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever you may be. And we will catch you on the next E4C webinar. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so Bye. much. Bye.